side with the fans and they honestly didn't have power until about 15 minutes ago which is why we're off to just a little bit of a late start here on this Saturday. It was sunny, it's starting to get a little overcast here, so if it rains, we have to cut the production down a little bit early. Last season, the Wildcats were 17-11. They finish at 4-3 in the PCL. This year, as we said, they are 12-4, 5-0 in conference play, and that big game coming up May 2nd versus Columbus Grove. Colin Hoffman leads the Wildcats with a 455 average and 19 RBI. Jaden Smith, 420 and 21 RBIs. Wildcats are hitting 348 as a team. On base percentage is 453, which is impressive. Team ERA for Clyde is 2.11. Colin Huffman is 3-1 on the mound, and Carson Clausing is 6-0. He has 50 strikeouts on the season. Clyde is coached by third season for head coach Chad Ernsberger. He is 47 and 25. He's a 96 Clyde graduate. JV coaches Tyler Leatherman, assisted by Ryan Huffman, Jim McBride, and Brian Clausing. Superintendent is Carl Lobbers. High school principal is Ding Dean Brinkman. Your athletic director is batting coach or batting coach, basketball coach, does a fantastic job is Adam Huber. Colors are maroon, white, and gold, and they are from the PCL, the Putnam County League. Rams are coached by head coach Brent Renolette, 23rd season at Sonora, 399 and 177 at Sonora. Overall, Coach Renolette is 446 and 202. Picked up his career win number 400 back in May of 2021 versus Patrick Henry. So if BR wins today or whatever his next win is going to be, that will be his 400th at Tenora. He's assisted by Chuck Carey and Reed Anders and Eric Tipton. Four Final Four appearances for Coach Reynolds at 2011, 12, 13, and 14. He has one state title. That was in 2014. We're coming upon the 10-year anniversary of that Clay Pittman single that drove home E.J. Kissel with a winning run versus Newark Catholic. 10 GMC titles, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, 18, 19, 21, and 22. This is the first season since 2016 that the Rams have not been atop the GMC standings at the end. Superintendent at Northeastern Local Schools is Nicole Wells. Your principal is Alex Nassiger. Athletic director who says hello to everybody out there watching and listening, Mr. Craig Rudder. Trainer at Tenora is Emily Volmar. Rams colors are hunter green and white. Rams are Division Three, so wherever you are and however you may be listening or watching, thanks for tuning in to this afternoon's game and coming up live here from the St. Michael Holy Name Ballpark here in Kaleida, see Tenor Rams taking on the Kaleida Wildcats in a non-conference matchup. Studio is brought to you by Cut and Polished Hair Nail Salon, located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. In game scoreboard, brought to you by Drop Zone Pizzeria in Stryker and Ayersville. Pre game, brought to you by Signs Excavating. Video sponsor, as always, Batten Stevens in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Stats, BSN Sports, and Mr. Jim Garris, your post game. Pitlack Insurance and Investments. Player of the game in a Rams win is Higby Embroidery. Uniforms tonight. Tonight, I'm going to say that. Like I said, I'm going to say that all game long. <laughs> Just used to say that. But your uniforms, Rams are in the all grays with the hunter green numbers and lettering with white trim. Very, I love this look for the Rams. Mr. Gears and BSN Sports brought these uniforms last season to the Rams, and that's just a fantastic look where the Wildcats are in the maroon tops with the gold numbers and lettering, white trim, and white pants. They have a three-colored cap, a white front with a K on it that's maroon with yellow, yellow bill, and a maroon back. David Frank weather, overcast here in Kaleida. Sun's been popping in and out. When we left the plains, it was sunny. The more we got here, a little more overcast it got, but it's 54 degrees here in Kaleida. Try to run down your starters real quick. I don't have, like I said, I don't have my stats because I just I, I showed up super early to prepare. Just we had no power and we had no lineups. So Rams, and now the starters for your club. eleven and three. Aiden Mosier in left field. Caden Radzik at short. Dalton Wolfram will be in right field. Taryn Ward at third base. 
Luke Harris will be at second base. Hunter Bosselman will be behind the plate for the Rams. B.J. Morlock starting at first. Riley Peters will be your D.H. pitching or D.H.ing for Corbin Castile, who will be on the mound for the Rams. And batting ninth in center field is Grady Gusweiler. For the Clyde Wildcats, leading off is Braylon Smith will be playing at second base. Batting second is Drew Buss batting or playing at third base. Batting third is Jaden Smith will be your shortstop. On the mound is Colin Huffman for the Wildcats. Carson Clausing will be hitting fifth and at first base. And there's a pause here for the playing of our national anthem and we'll be back with the rest of the lineup right after this. Thomas Holy Name Ballpark. Jason Siebenick will be batting sixth and be playing in right field. Batting seventh, Heaven Clausing, he will be in left field. DH is Michael Hortzman and Ethan Weary will be behind the plate now. The lineup I got from Clyde I had 10 in it, so <laughs> one of the, somebody's not going to be batting, so we'll worry about that when the time is needed and when they come to plate. You're welcome, Bridget. Hopefully everything comes in and we can stay out here in uh, the dry conditions. And right behind the church here. Like I said, for those of you that's joining us, when this gets complex, gets completed over here, it's just going to be it's, it's fantastic now. They're finishing up the stands. Uh, they got to put some siding around the concession stand. But outside of that, this is going to be a fantastic facility. Got the church in the background. As you can hear the church bell going off back back behind us. I got to turn down my sound because we're on Facebook, and Facebook doesn't like music in the background. So... Looking at the defense for Chad Ernsberger's Wildcats. Colin Hoffman will be on the mound for the Wildcats. Behind the plate, Ethan Weary. First base, Griffin Clausing. Second base, Braylon Smith. Shortstop, Jaden Smith. Third base is Drew Buss. Outfield. Left field is Evan Clausing. Center field is Michael Horseman. And then right field is Owen Siebenick. That's, that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> but this is a little bit out of my normal element setting out here. Mosier. So Aiden Mosier is going to lead off for the Rams. Mosier, 316 on the season, has 14 walks and 12 RBIs. Mosier batting from the left side of the plate. Rams and their grays here today, all grays. Beautiful look. Winds it up, first pitch. Call to strike, we are underway here at Clyda. 11.01 for the first pitch. 50, 40 degrees on your David Frank weather. Overcast, sun's popping in and out. Pitch to Mosier, strike two. 
Colin Huffman quickly ahead. He winds it up. Pitch to Mosier inside. One ball and two strikes to leadoff hitter Aiden Mosier. Nice season for the sophomore. Pitch to Mosier. Hey. Off speed pitch. Get some swinging out number one. Caden Radzik. Caden Radzik's going to step in. Rams shortstop Radzik comes in leading the team with a 455 average. He has 19 runs batted in. Caden bats from the right side of the plate. Pitch is high to Radzik. Ball one. So as you get the numbers for Cullen Huffman, when I have a split second here. Pitch to Caden, strike called. Count evens, one ball, one strike, just underway here at Kaleidon, no score. Wind up in the pitch by Huffman, strike two called. Cullen Huffman throwing strikes. Pitch fouled off first base side, out of play. Cullen Huffman, let's see where he's at here. He has 20 innings pitched, four games started. He is three and one overall. He's allowed 14 hits in 20 innings, nine runs, six earned runs, walked eight, struck out 26. ERA is 2.10 as my papers go flying. <laughs> A little windy here. Pitches a ball to Caden. Two balls and two strikes to Radzik. This pitch is fouled up. Behind the plate, the catcher could not see it. The pitcher, Clousing, or Huffman, I mean, Huffman came in and put it away just inside foul territory, retiring Radzik for out number two. Dalton Wolfram to the plate. Dalton's had a heck of a week. Two player of the games by Higby Embroidery. Pitches outside to Dalton. Dalton's finally under 400, 396 for Dalton. He has 14 runs batted in. I think he's got about 10 of those this week. Pitches high and away. Two balls had no strike to Dalton Wolfram. Huffman winds it up. 2-0 pitch, swung on and miss. Strike one. Dalton swinging for the fences. Two one pitches outside. Three balls and one strike to Rams right fielder today. Dalton Wolfram. Pitch to Wolfram. Swung on. Hit third base side. Coach Renolette will field it. Nice play out there by BR. It's right in front of you sometimes there. There he is. Heckling for the fans, of course. <laughs> Full count pitch to Dalton is a little bit high. Wolfram draws a two-out walk. He heads it down to first base. Going to bring up Taryn Ward. Ward for the season for Tenora is 349. Has 11 RBIs. First pitch to Terran is a ball. Well, from threat to steal. Cullen Huffman from the set. There goes Dalton. Pitch. Strike call. Throw down. Head first dive by Wolfram. Stolen base by Dalton. Ball got away from the second baseman. Not far enough to see Dalton advance any further, but Wolfram. Heck, like I said, what a heck of a week Dalton has had. This is ninth steal on the season. Leads away from second. Pitch coming to Ward is high and in. Ball two. Two balls, one strike, two out here. Just underway at Clyden. No score. BR coaching at third. 399 wins here at Sonora. And Mr. Tipton over there coaching at first. Pitch to Terran is high. Ball three. Three balls and one strike to the Rams. Third baseman, Terran Ward. Luke Harris on deck. Ball four. Back-to-back -back walks. 
Ward trots down to first. Number one, Luke Harris. Gonna bring up Luke Harris. Well, Luke Harris, 348 on the season with nine runs batted in. Hunter Balsam on deck. Harris bats from the right side. Senior comes to the plate with runners at first and second. First pitch is inside. 1-0 to Luke Harris. Pitch to Harris is ball two. Colin Huffman got the first two batters out. It has walked the next two and has a two balls and no strike count to Luke Harris. Time out by Kaleida. Pitching coach is going to go out and have a little bit of conversation with his starter, Colin Hoffman. Noel Schaefer, thanks for joining us. Appreciate that. As your mom's probably told you, Nolan, sometimes I say that it seems like you played at Sonora for like six seasons, which you've started the varsity sport, basically, in every sport since a freshman. It seems like you were in school forever. And you were missed here, I assure you. Conversation is over. 2-0 count to Luke Harris. Rams with runners at first and second. Harris digs back in. Ward leads away at first. Dalton Wolfram leads away at second. Long look in by Huffman. Finally gets the sign. Comes set. Harris winds it into center field. Oh! Out of nowhere comes second baseman Jaden Smith for a diving catch to steal an RBI away, RBI away from Luke Harris. That was one of the best plays we've seen this year. Braylon Smith with the play of the year stealing a single from Luke Harris after one inning, the Rams, no runs. They threatened, almost had a run there. No hits, no Kaleida errors, and the Rams leave 2 on base after a half inning of play here at Kaleida High School. It is the Rams nothing, and the Kaleida Wildcats coming to bat. Van Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Van Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Matt and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back to the action on Sonora Rams Sports Live. Back at Kaleida. Rams threatened, did not score. That was a heck of a play by second baseman Braylon Smith. Ticketed for center field on the Luke Harris liner. And Smith came out of nowhere, lunged, dove on the outfield cut of the grass behind second base to snag a liner from Luke Harris. On the mound for the Rams is Corbin Castile. And I gotta find my stats because, like I said, I didn't have anything ready because we didn't have any power here. And I got everything anchored down because everything's blowing all over the place. Corbin Castile on the year is 3 and 1. He's pitched 21 innings allowed, 16 runs, 6 earned runs, 32 hits. Walked 8, struck out 22. ERA for Corbin is 2.00. For the 12 and 4 Wildcats, coached by Chad Ernsberger. Braylon Smith digs in. And doesn't that figure that the player that made the play to end the inning. Oh, there goes my drink again. When does. <laughs> Oh, I got a mess. The wind knocked over my drink for the second time this week. And the papers are saturated. 
First pitch was a ball. Second pitch is a strike. One ball and one strike. Just underway here in the second inning. No score. Coach Ernsberger coaching at third for the Wildcats. Castillo winds it up, fires, check swing, strike by the leadoff hitter, Braylon Smith. Smith 375 with nine runs batted in on the season. Swings and drives it in the gap. Lands between Wolfram and Gusweiler. In with a sliding double is Braylon Smith. So Smith checks in at second base. 36. Drew Buss is going to step in for the Wildcats. He's going to bat from the right side of the plate. And the stats on Drew. <clears throat> Three eighty six with nine runs batted in for Boos. Throw back to second. Back safely. There is a Braylon Smith. So Smith ends the inning. Stealing a run from the Rams and steps in and rams a double into right center field. Castillo from the set. Pitch coming to Boos. He fouls it back. Got a play. Probably in the background can hear some noise occasionally. They are installing the stands here underneath the covering here at Holy Name Ballpark. Last time we were here, which we'll get to that here in a bit, Castillo comes set. 1-1 one, one pitch to Boose. He bumps it back to Castillo. Plays over at first base. So Boose does his job. Puts Braylon Smith down to third with one out. Sacrifice goes 1-3 on the putout for the first out. That's going to bring up Jaden Smith. So Braylon is on at third. And Jaden steps to the plate. Bats from the right side. Castillo comes set. Pitch. Strike called on the outside corner. Jaden Smith, 420 with 21 runs batted in and seven steals on the season. Pitch is hit to center field. Gus Weiler still going back. Camps underneath it, puts it away, tagging up for Kaleida and scoring the first run is Braylon Smith. So he gets a sacrifice on that. Get him in, Jade. F8 on the putout for out number two. Braylon Smith in the leadoff double. Sacrificed over to third. And they score on a sacrifice fly. Textbook baseball here by Clyda. Stepping in is Cullen Huffman. Huffman's your starter for Clyda. 400 with 19 runs batted in and five steals for Huffman. He swings, lines it just passed us into the fence for a strike two. Got to remember to throw a towel in my bag so when I spill stuff, I have something to clean it up with. So now I just kind of wind up with a big sticky wet mess of papers and stuff. <laughs> no balls in, two strikes to Colin Huffman. Castile winds, fires, line shot right at Caden Radzik is short. Radzik scoops it off his shoe tops, retiring Cullen Huffman and the Wildcats. But the Wildcats, they're on the board with one run. They do so on one hit. No Ram errors and nobody left on base. After one inning of play here at Kaleida High School. I guess we're not at the high school. We're at Holy Name Park. We're in downtown Kaleida. It is the Kaleida Wildcats nothing. Or, good word. Kaleida Wildcats one and the Tenor Rams nothing. We'll be back after this time out and uh, try and reset my brain and clean up my mess here. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give 
them a call, 419-784-9880, or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com, or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say, go Rams. Back at Holy Name Ballpark here in Kaleida. Wildcats with a one nothing lead over the Rams. 309 in right field, straightaway center field at Holy Name is 356. It's 345 in the alley and 303 down the left field line. Stop getting for the Rams will be Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman behind the plate for the Rams. Hunter. So you have a lot more playing time behind the plate. When Dalton's unable to catch. First pitch is a ball to you, Hunter. Bosselman hitting at 200 has 10 runs batted in on the season. Nails that one down the line. Hits first base. Gonna go for two. Outfielder in left field bobbles it. Evan Clossing. So Bosselman takes the 1-0 pitch down the left field line, and he's got a double. That's going to bring up B.J. Morlock. So the Rams with the runner in scoring position, trailing one to nothing here in the top of inning number one. B.J. Morlock steps in. P.J. batting 143 on the season has five hits and 21 at bats. First pitch to B.J. Is the ball. Try and reset the collided defense when we have a split second here. Colin Hoffman sets, throws. Warlock bumps at third base side. Perfect bunt. Sliding into third base as Hunter Bosselman. Warlock is out number one. One three on the put out. So the Rams have the tying run at third here in the second inning. Trailing one nothing. Gonna bring up Riley Peters. Peters gets the start for DHing for Castile. First pitch is a strike to Riley. Riley comes in with a 300 average, three hits and 10 at bats. He has five runs batted in. Colin Hoffman with the sign to the plate. Just a bit outside. Count to Peters. Evens at one ball and one strike. Peters looks down at Coach Renolet. Runner at third is Bosselman. Leads away. Hoffman long look in. Gets the sign. Comes set. There goes the runner. Suicide squeeze. The pitch is missed. Back to third base safely. <laughs> is Hunter Bosselman. Two balls and one strike to Riley. I think he must the bunt sign there. Pitch is high and away. County or goes to three balls and one strike. Peters digs back in, bats from the right side. Bossom leads away from third. Pitch to Peters, swings and misses. Strike two, full count to Riley Peters. On deck, the number nine hitter is Grady Gusweiler. Hoffman's pitch hit right at the second baseman. Little pop liner there. For out number two, F4 on the put out. Little head high pop up off the bat of Peters. It's going to bring up Grady Gusweiler. Grady on the season, 310. First pitch. Well, pitcher stepped off, so we'll redo it. Pitch is a ball. Ball one to Grady. Grady with 11 walks on the season, and I think the last game he walked three times. Pitch to Gus Weiler. Outside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes to the number nine. Three balls and no strikes to Grady. Runner at third with one or two outs now. Pitch to Grady is low and outside, ball four, so Colin Huffman 
Couldn't find the strike zone there, so Grady with his, I'm pretty sure it's his fourth straight walk, if you include Thursday's games. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier. Mosier struck out to start the game for the Rams. one nothing Wildcats here in the top of inning number two over here at Holy Name Ballpark. Throw it on the third base. They almost had him picked off. Ethan Weary fired down to Boos. Put the tag on and the ball popped out of Boos's glove. Pitch was a strike to Aiden Mosier. Colin Hoffman winds it up. Pitch. Oh, Tapper, third base side. That's going to be a tough play. It was the first. Not in time. Rams get a run. Bosselman scores. Almost as good as a butt. So Mosier won at first with an RBI single. Gusweiler hustled all the way to third on that play. So Rams have runners at the corners with two outs. Tied at one now here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Bring up Caden Radzik. Radzik 0 for 1. Popped out to the pitcher and foul territory. There goes the runner Mosier down to second. So Aiden with an RBI and now a stolen base. For Mosier, that's stolen base number 12. Radzik taps at third base side. Strike two on Aiden. Gusweiler at third and Mosier at second. Radzik at the plate. Colin Huffman winds it up. Pitch to Caden is high. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. Mosier's infield single has tied it at one. Pitch coming to Caden. That's high and away. Count even two balls and two strikes. Colin Hoffman winds it up. 2 2 pitch to Radzik. Bit outside. Count goes full. Radzik has worked it from no balls and two strikes to full count at three and two. Mosier on at second leads away. Gus Weiler leads away at third. Pitch to Radzik. Fouled it off at the plate. Got some little benches behind the dugout so the fans can stand on the benches and look over the dugout and watch the game because there's minimal seating. I said it numerous times to people during the week. Make sure you bring your lawn chair. Radzik swings, pops it up on the infield. Just a bit in foul territory. Third base, Drew Boos puts it away. Retiring Radzik for out number two, or out number three here in the second. So second time Radzik's popped up into foul territory. This is F5. In the inning, the Rams have tied the game. They get one run. They do so on two hits. No errors. Rams leave two on base. Rams have left four on base through two innings. Heading to the bottom of the second inning here at Kaleida's Holy Name Ballpark on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard, we are tied at one. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Bottom of the second we go here at Holy Name Ballpark. We are tied at one for Kaleida. Five, six, and seven. Carson Clossing, Jacob Siebenick, and Evan Clossing will be our three batters to face Corbin Castile for the Rams. Braylon Smith led off the inning, last inning for Clyda. Hit a double in the right center gap. 
he sacrificed him to second and or sacrificed him to third and he scored on a fly ball to the outfield like we said textbook baseball at the time for the wild catch Klausing steps in first pitch from Castile swung on and miss for a strike Klausing 360 with 15 runs batted in through 16 games for the 12 and 4 Wildcats. Pitch swung on, fouled off first base side. That's going to be out of play. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nolan. Thank you, Bridget. Sun's starting to pop out here. Wind's still blowing stuff everywhere, and the papers are still wet and soggy. <laughs> The joys of outside games as a broadcaster. Pitches outside. One ball and two strikes to the number five hitter, first baseman Carson Clausing. Jacob Sibanek awaits on deck. I just hope the barbecue place next door don't start grilling here pretty soon because if that smell comes this way, we're all in trouble. Pitches tap foul, first base side. Bosselman picks it up. As I said, you can hear some saw in there. They're still they're still working on a Saturday over here. I want to come back this summer and get some pictures of this place because this is going to be fantastic. It's kind of a classic old school ballpark, and they completely redid it. Castillo winds it up, his one-two pitch. Just a bit outside. Count goes to two ball and two strikes. $2.6 million in, I believe, donations is what they came up with for this. This is just beautiful. The, the pitcher looking through a fence obviously does not do it justice. <laughs> Castillo winds it up his 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and miss strike three. Clausing goes down on strikes. The first strikeout for Castillo. Going to bring up Jacob Siebenick. So the right fielder, Jacob Siebenick, steps in. Siebenick. 313 with 12 runs batted in the season. Has one home run. This one, first pitch swinging, hits it to Radzik at short. Radzik sets himself, fires across in time to get Siebenick for out number two. 6-3 on the putout. Holy name ballpark over here in Kaleida. Downtown Kaleida. It's right by the Dairy Queen, too. Can't get much better than that. You got barbecue on one side of you. You got Dairy Queen on the other side. <laughs> Castillo winds up. First pitch to Evan Clausing is called a strike. Clausing 313 or 318. Eight runs batted in on the season for Evan Clausing. He is playing in the left field. Castillo's 0-1 pitch is high and away. One ball and one strike. Two outs here in the bottom of the second inning. We are tied at one. Coach Renolette in search of Snorra win number 400. He's at 399. Pitch swung on, hit third base side. Ward up with it. Long throw over. Morlock. Nice stretch over there by BJ to get clausing 5-3 on the putout for out number three. In the second inning, the, wild the Wildcats go quietly. No runs, no hits, no ram errors, and no collide of base runners left on base. We head to the top of the third inning over here at Holy Name Ballpark in downtown Kaleida. We are tied at one on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Fairchild Family Car Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at FairchildFamilyChiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla, proud members of the Tenor Athletic Booster Say go Rams. 
back here at Kaleida. We are tied at one as we head to the top of inning number three, Dalton Wolfram. Karen Ward and Luke Harris. Three, four, and five for the Rams. First pitch is a strike call to Dalton Wolfram. Dalton walked and stole a base in the first inning. This one hits at third baseman playing way in. One hops it, throws over in time to get Dolph, Dalton Wolfram. Nice play by the third baseman for quite a Drew Bus. Or Boos. Looks like Bus. It's Boos. So Wolfram's retired 5-3 on the put out for out number one. Taryn Ward steps in. Ward went bad against Colin Huffman. First pitch is high and away. Ball one. Clyde with a run in the first. Sonora with a run in the second. One run on two hits for Sonora. Pitch swung on, hit first base side out of play by Taryn Ward. Just went over the rain to stay away for about another 90 minutes. We'll be all set. Hoffman gets the sign from Weary. Winds it up. 1-1 one, one pitch to Taryn Ward. Just a bit outside. Two balls and one strike to the Rams third baseman, Taryn Ward. Strike. Two call, two balls and two strikes now to Taryn. Ward swings, drills it deep right center, back they go. One hops the fence. Horseman picks it up, throws it back in, but not before Taryn Ward with a one out double. <laughs> Ward gave it a ride out there. Deep right field, hit right between the 359 and 356 signs here at Kaleida. Stepping in, Luke Harris. Luke's 0 for 1. Popped out to the second baseman in his first plate appearance. Colin Hoffman gets the sign, looks back at Taryn Ward. Pitch to Harris is a ball ball one thanks for joining us on this saturday here on tomorrow rams live we appreciate that so thank you roger for always tuning in pitch says outside to luke harris pittsburgh zoo bridget nolan and a couple others up top there i can't see anymore but 2-0 pitch coming to harris that's a high and away ball three. Three balls and no strikes to Luke Harris. One out here. Rams batting in the top of the third inning in a tie ball game at one. Cullen Huffman's pitch. Strike call to Harris. Three balls and one strike to Luke. Rams, as you can see, where they're on top of the dugout. Maybe you can't see looking through the fence. Pitch to Harris. Strike two on the outside corner. Count goes full to Luke. Ward leads away from second. On deck for the Rams is Hunter Bosselman. Hoffman looks back at the runner. Comes set. Pitch inside to Harris. Luke Harris trots down to first base on the walk. Going to bring up Hunter Bosselman with some runners for the Rams at first and second. Bosselman 200 on the season, has 10 RBIs. Perfect chance here for RBI number 11. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. That's what I'm saying. They haven't they haven't started next door yet, but good Lord, if they do, we're in trouble. <laughs> Ball gets away from the catcher. Down to third base goes Taryn Ward. Ward down to third. Harris stayed put. But yes, we have... Smokies to our right and the Dairy Queen to our left. So if one really wanted to, they could go pig out on ribs and then wait a couple minutes and well, probably half an hour and then top it off with some ice cream next door. There's a nice pizza place downtown too as well. <laughs> there goes the runner Harris head first slide. Harris into second base safely with a stolen base. Ward, he held on at third. One ball, one strike is the count to Bosselman. Bosselman digs in after he gets the signs from BR. 
Hoffman looks in, gets the sign from Weary, comes set. Pitch to Bosselman is low. Two balls and one strike. It's lunchtime anyways, Nancy. It's approaching lunchtime. So, <laughs> two one pitch from Huffman. A little bit low. Ball three. Three balls and one strike to Hunter Bosselman. B.J. Morlock on deck. Bosselman doubled and scored in the second. 3-1 pitch to Hunter up and in. Ball four. That's going to load him up. Bosselman down the first base on the walk. Harris is already at second on the stolen base. Ward led off with a double. Went to third on a wild pitch. B.J. Morlock steps in. A sacrifice in the second. Perfect sacrifice by B.J. First pitch swung on. Hitting foul territory. Weary. He's a little bit late. But Colin Huffman hustles all the way over right in front of the new stands here and puts it away, retiring Morlock for out number two. Oh, pop up. Weary couldn't find it. Huffman jetted off the mound and put it away in foul territory, retiring Morlock. So Peters steps in. First pitch swings and misses. Peters hitting for the Rams pitcher, Corbin Castile. He is 0 for 1. Popped up to the second baseman, his first plate appearance. Pitch is fouled at the plate. Huffman quickly ahead of Peters. No balls and two strikes. Tight at one here in the top of the third. Rams had the bases loaded with one out. Now two outs now. Peters did quickly down the count. No balls and two strikes. Colton Huffman gets the sign, comes set. Pitch fouled at the plate. Peters has five RBIs on the season. Came in hitting 300. Three hits and 10 at bats for Riley. Perfect chance here for some more RBIs to break this 1 1 tie. Huffman again leans in, gets the sign, comes set, pitch to Peters. Foul back again. Riley staying alive. And for those of you popping in and out, the sawing you here in the background is here at the ballpark. There's Construction going on, which is awesome. I can't, like I said, I can't wait till this thing's done. Pitch to Riley up and in, and it hit him on the hand. Peters gets an RBI the old fashioned way, just takes one up by the shoulder. So Riley with an RBI on the hit by pitch, scoring is Taryn Ward. Harris down to third. Bosselman down to second, and Peters is on at first. Bases full of Rams with Grady Gusweiler at the plate. Grady walked his first plate appearance. First pitch to Grady is a strike. Grady's on some sort of walk train here. He's had four straight plate appearances and four straight walks. First pitch is a strike. Pitch number two is high and away. Count evens at one ball and one strike to Rams center fielder. Grady Gusweiler as the sun pops out here. We could use more sun. 1-1 one, one pitch to Grady. Outside corner, strike to call. Grady did not think so. He thought it was a little bit, looked a little bit high and away. But we're about 120 feet away from the action. 1-2 pitch, hit right at the second baseman. Braylon Smith scoops it up and fires over to shortstop Jaden Smith to retire the Rams in the second. 4-6 on the putout for out number three. But the Rams get a run. They do so as Riley Peters was hit with the bases loaded in the inning for Tenora. One hit. That was a Terran Ward leadoff double. No errors. And the Rams leave them loaded. The Rams have left seven on base through three innings. So after two and a half innings of play here at Holy Name Ballpark here in Clyde, Ohio, the Tenora Rams two and the Clyde Wildcats one on your drop zone beats a real scoreboard. Signs Excavating of Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, bring up Brad, 419 
719-481-3738. Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Heading to the bottom of inning number three here at Kaleida. It's the Rams on top by a score of 2-1. to one. Bottom part of the lineup, Michael Hortzman, Ethan Weary, and then the top, Braylon Smith to face Corbin Castile. Castile gave up that leadoff double to Braylon Smith to start the Wildcats' bottom part of the first inning, and he has pretty much retired everybody since. And the Kaleida did score that, he said, a couple times on textbook baseball by Coach uh, Chad Ernsberger. Double, sacrificed the runner to third, and they scored on the sacrifice fly. So Horseman steps in for the Wildcats. Oh, that's Mendeli, actually. So that's Dylan Bendelli. Two strikes on him. Original lineup actually had Michael Hortzman there. Castillo's 0-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Bendelli for out number one. That's the second strikeout for Castillo. Stepping into the plate will be Michael Hortzman. So Hortzman's in the ninth spot. First pitch is a little bit outside. Gets away from Bossom and the catcher, but not far. No runners on, so it really doesn't matter. Michael Hortzman hitting 154 with three runs batted in. Has six steals on the season. Pitch is... A little bit outside, same spot, same result. Popped out of the glove of Balsamon. He had to step outside and go pick it up. Castillo winds it up. 2-0 pitch coming to Horseman. He fouls it back. Strike one, two balls, and one strike, one out. Here in the bottom of the third inning, Rams with a 2-1 lead for the Clyde Wildcats here at the St. Thomas for St. Michael's Holy Name Ballpark. St. Thomas heard us a beautiful place to visit. Pitches swung on and missed. Two balls and two strikes. To number nine hitter, Michael Hortzman. Hortzman bats from the right side. Castillo gets the sign from Balsam and comes set, winds it up, and strike three swinging. Hortzman goes down, back-to-back -back strikeouts four. Castillo, top of the lineup, Braylon Smith. Let off with a double in the right center gap. Batting in the leadoff spot, playing at second base. And pitch hits it in the same spot, just a little bit shorter this time. Coming over is Dalton Wolfram to pick it up. Last one went in the same spot, just went a lot farther in the gap there. But Wolfram cuts it off. Holds Braylon Smith to a single. Pittsburgh Sioux. Yes, indeed. Beautiful Saturday here. Drew Booth steps in. Sacrificed. Braylon Smith down to second. His first plate appearance. Rams lead 2-1. to one. Wildcats have a runner at first with two outs. Castillo comes set, throws over. Morlock puts the tag on the runner. Braylon Smith. Smith's got his hand just ahead of the swipe by Morlock. Castillo looks at the runner, comes set. Pitch to the plate. Pitch is a ball to boost. Yeah, Nancy, I mean, like I said earlier, it's, they stop over there after the game, along with everybody else. They probably will stop over there as well. Thrower Morlock puts the tag on Braylon Smith. He's back safely. But I smell nothing yet, which is good. Another throw over. Back to first base. Safely is Braylon Smith. Clyde 
Carolina has 46 steals as a team. They've only been caught three times. Pitch. Skied over the Rams dugout on the first base side out of play. Clyde has scored 133 runs. Here's more interesting than the 46 steals and just three cost steals. They have 78 walks. And they've only struck out 76 times. Very seldom do you see a high school baseball team with more walks than strikeouts. Castillo comes set. His 1-1 pitch to boost. It's a bit outside. Two balls and one strike to the number two hitter, third baseman, Drew Boos. Jaden Smith on deck. Braylon Smith on at first. He leads away. The steal. Comes set. Looks at the runner. Comes to the plate. Pitch is just a bit outside. Three balls and one strike to Drew Boos. Steel looks over at Braylon Smith at first. Comes set. Pitch to the plate. 3 1 pitch is fouled back. So the count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Two outs here. So Braylon Smith will be off. As soon as Castillo throws the ball, I wouldn't be surprised if Corbin just has a courteous throw over there to keep him a little bit uh, closer. And he comes set. Comes to the plate. Pitch is swung on. Shallow fly ball. Radzik goes out. Mosier comes in. It lands in between them. A little blue hit by Drew Boos. Spraylon Smith on his horse. Winds up at third. So Boos with a little bloop single in between Radzik going out and Mosier coming in. Jaden Smith with a sacrifice fly to Gus Weiler in center. Deep center field scored Braylon Smith in the first for Clyda's only run. Trying to add more here with runners at the corners with two outs. Pitches up and in. Ball one. To Jaden Smith. Colin Huffman on deck. Last year, Clyda with a 7-5 extra inning win at Tenora over the Rams. Castile's pitch. Outside. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes to the Wildcats shortstop, Jaden Smith. Coach Schoensberger right in front of you here. BR was over here in between innings. Probably he's going to sign autographs. Save that for after the game. Pitch is fouled back. Two balls and one strike now. To the number three hitter shortstop, Jaden Smith for the Wildcats. BR in search of Tenora. Career win 400 today. 399 Tenora wins. Castillo comes set. Pitch is inside. Smith steps back. Three balls and no strikes. Actually, they're going to rule a balk. I think. Coach Tipton is going to come out and find out what happened there, but assuming they rule the balk, so Braden Smith scores on that balk to tie the game at two. Going down to second base was Drew Boos. We're going to have a pinch runner for Boos. Can't see who that is. Jalen Smith still at the plate with a two balls and one strike count. So we are tied at two on the balk. Count to Jaden is two balls and one strike. Castile comes set. Looks back at the runner at second. He comes set, throws to the plate. Outside corner, ball three. Three balls and one strike now to Jaden Smith. Rams with single runs in the second and third. Clyde with single runs in first and third. We're tied at two here in the third. Smith swings, drives it deep. Foul here in left field. Right back there by the church. By the 303 sign down there in left field. 303 in left field, 309 in right. 359 in the right center alley, 345 in the left center alley here. 356 to straightaway center. Castillo comes set, payoff pitch, outside ball four. Number 17, Colin Hoffman. So Jaden Smith draws a walk. Yeah. 
Wildcats with runners at first and second now with two outs. Each team with three hits. Colin Huffman steps in. First pitch to Colin is inside ball one. Huffman 400 with 19 runs batted in on the season. Probably not the person you want to see in this situation. Steele struggling a little bit here in the third. His 1-0 pitch to the plate. Swung on and missed. Count evens at one ball and one strike. To the Wildcat pitcher, Cullen Huffman. Sun popping through again here at Holy Name Ballpark. To steal, fires back to second. Radzik broke in behind the runner, put the tag on him, but back safely was the pinch runner, Eli Patrick. So Patrick's the runner for a boost. One ball, one strike with two outs. Pitch coming to Carson Clausing. Runners lead from first and second for the Wildcats. It's one on drill. Radzik backhand stop. Long throw across. In time! Caden Radzik. With that, I have to say that play was better than the one by Braden Smith earlier. Radzik deep in the hole, slid on a knee, got up, fired over to Morlock at first to retire the Cats. Heck of a play by Radzik. The Wildcats do tie the game here in the inning. They get one run. They do so on two base hits. No Ram errors. Wildcats lead two. We're heading to the fourth inning here at Holy Name Ballpark in Kaleida. Tied at three on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The Law Office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on tenorarams.com. Back here at Kaleida, Holy Name, we have a pitching change. E.J. Miller will come on to pitch for the Wildcats. So Miller will come in in place of Cullen Huffman. So Huffman pitches the first three for the Wildcats. And we'll get try and get the numbers here on E.J. Miller. So Miller comes in with just three innings pitched on the season. He has faced 12 batters. He's allowed two hits, one run, one earned run, and has not walked anybody. He struck out three. So E.J. Miller's ERA is 2.33. So Miller is going to check in. Top of the lineup for the Rams, Mosier, Radzik, and Wolfram to face E.J. Miller. First pitch by E.J. is outside. Ball one. That was a one heck of a play. I mean, I obviously, the, uh, yeah, I didn't get it. Camera's just at the infield, but Radzik with one of the better plays we've seen this season. Thought the play by Jalen Smith was good to, be, to start the game, but that backhand sliding stop by Radzik composed himself and fired. That was a long throw over to BJ at first. to get uh, Colin Huffman for the final out. Runners were on first and second, too. That was a, that was a huge play. Foul ball. Lands behind us. Two balls and two strikes to Aiden Mosier. Mosier struck out in the first. Singled. Stole the base in the, the second inning. Pitch just a bit outside. E.J. Miller wanted that. Count goes full. So Miller was not in the game. Comes in the pitch for Colin Huffman. Payoff pitch to Mosier. Hits second base side. Braylon Smith scoops it up. 
Throws over to Griffin Clousing at first to retire Mosier. 4-3 on the put out for the first out here in the fourth. We are tied at two as the Rams are batting here in the fourth inning. Rams have left seven runners on base through the first three in the third innings. Radzik 0 for two steps in. Came in hitting 455 and 19 runs batted in for the 11 and three Rams. So is 11 and three, Clyde is 12 and four. Pitch is a strike to Caden Radzik. On deck is Dalton Wolfram. E.J. Miller gets the sign, winds it up. Pitch to Caden, strike two called. No balls and two strikes to Radzik. No runners on for the Rams. One out here. Top of the fourth inning, tied at two. Here in downtown Kaleida. Radzik swings, gives it a ride into left center field. Cruising over there is Evan Clausing to put it away for the second out. Radzik. Number 15, Dalton Wolfram. Tried to hit in the gap, but Evan Clausing over there put it away for out number two. Dalton Wolfram steps in for Tenora. Dalton walked and stole the base in the first. Grounded to third in the third. E.J. Miller's pitch to Dalton Wolfram was called a strike. Strike one. Miller winds, fires, rope down the left field line, just inside the line. Clausing picks it up, not before Dalton Wolfram is in with a stand-up double. Two-out double by Dalton. <laughs> Dalton stays hot. Went through about a 0 for 5 or 0 for 6 streak there, but Dalton, probably the, other than maybe him and Caden Radzik, smoking hot for the Rams. Going to bring up Taron Ward. Taron doubled and scored his last at bat and had a stolen base. Pitch to Taron is outside. Ball one. Rams with a go-ahead run at second in this 2-2 tie here. Fourth hit for the Rams. Clyde has three hits. Each team with two runs. E.J. Miller comes set. His pitch to the plate. Just a bit inside. Two balls and no strikes to Rams third baseman Taryn Ward. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here on this Saturday in Kaleida. Nancy, Pittsburgh Sioux, Nolan, Bridget. Pitch is outside. Nice stop by Ethan Weary back there. It was the last area Bridget traveled from Finley back to Sonora. We had that long game against Napoleon. And then had to go back to Finley for Ethan. <laughs> So that game started like at 10.30 or 10.45 at night. 3-0 <laughs> -oh pitch going to Ward. Strike on the outside corner. Now that's a full day. <laughs> Travel to Finley. Watch Ethan come back to chilly, wet Tenora. Watch a marathon game versus Napoleon. And then go back to Finley. <laughs> Taron hits it to the shortstop. Smith bobbles it, recovers, throws over just in time to get Taron Ward for out number three. He's a one hopper to Jaden Smith at short. He bobbled it, composed himself, scooped it up, fired over to first base in time to get Ward. So the Rams in the inning threaten, leave a runner at second. Two out double by Wolfram does no damage. No runs, one hit, no Wildcat errors, and one Ram left on base. Rams have left a runner on base every inning, and that is the eighth runner left on base by Tenora. Heading to the bottom of the fourth inning here at Holy Name Ballpark in Clyde, Ohio. The church bells ran, so it must be noon, I'm assuming. We are tied at two on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, 
Thursday and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drive Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiance Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Back here at Kaleida, we are tight at 2, 56 degrees here in Kaleida on your David Frank weather forecast. Wind blowing out to right field, almost directly to right field for Kaleida. 5, 6, and 7. We'll bat Carson Clausing, Jacob Siebenick, and Evan Clausing. First pitch swung on and missed by Carson Clausing. 360 with 15 runs batted in on the season for Carson. Castile's 0-1 pitch is outside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Steals pitch as we probably have these tornado siren tests going off now. <laughs> Church bells, tornado sirens, construction. Going to be smelling ribs being made pretty soon. Ice cream. It's going to be a full day over here as well. <laughs> Pitches outside. Three balls and one strike to Carson Clausing. Steals pitch effective. Got a little bit of trouble last inning. Run scored on the balk. 3-1 pitch, swung on. Driven foul. My car's parked over there, so don't hit it. I like the shape of the 10. Cow goes full, 3-2 and two to number five hitter, Carson Clausing. Clausing leading off the fourth here. We are tied at two. The steals winds it up. Pitch, check swing. Ball four. Carson Clausing with a leadoff walk to start the Wildcat fourth. Bring up Jacob Siebenick. Jacob Siebenick steps in. Grounded to Radzik. That's short in the second. Thirteen with 12 runs batted in for Steven Hick. <laughs> Pitch swung on and fouled back. I think a tornado lasts for, siren lasts for 60 or 90 seconds, I'm not sure, but whatever it is, it's too long. For a test, that I should say. Not an actual tornado. It wants to go forever, of course, but which we experienced in the fights about a month ago. Oh, one one pitch to Steven Hick is outside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Bottom of the fourth here at Kaleida. Leadoff walk to Carson Clausing. He's on at first. Siebenick at the plate. One ball, one strike to him. Castillo looks over at the runner. Comes set. Pitch to the plate. Strike two. Or strike. Yeah, strike two on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes to number six hitter. Right fielder, Jacob Siebenick. Evan Clausing should be on deck. Got a banner right here in our way. It's kind of like Field of Dreams. It has the kids coming out of a cornfield for their seniors. Pitches, little pop-up right back to Castile for out number one. Number 13, E.J. Miller. Pitch inside. Siebenick swung, popped it up right on his fist. Castile just waited there like he was catching a balloon and put it away for out number one. Evan Clossing steps in. Go, no, it's E.J. Miller's batting. So Miller's batting. First pitch to him is swung on and missed for a strike. <laughs> Runner at first. One out now. 0-1 pitch coming to E.J. Miller. Swung on, fouled back. Miller came on the pitch last inning in relief of Colin Huffman. Hitting for Evan Clausing, who was 0 for 1. 0 2 pitch from Castile coming. Up and in, that heads to the backstop. Down to second base goes Carson Clausing, so he's going to wind up in a scoring position. That's just as good as a bunt. One ball and two strikes to count to E.J. Miller. Hey. 
deal come set. One, two to Miller. Swung on. Hit shortstop side. Radzik up with it. No play at third. Throws over to first base. Gets by the first baseman. Morlock. That was a low throw. Scoring the go-ahead run on the air is going to be Carson Clausing. Down to second base goes E.J. Miller. E6. Air on... Caden Radzik made a nice play, looked at the runner a third, and then in doing so, threw it over to first base to B.J. Morlock. Throw was a little bit low. Got by Morlock. So the Wildcats grab a 3-2 lead. That was a first error in the game. Going to bring up Dylan Bendelli. He struck out in the third. Bottom of the fourth, Wildcats with a 3-2 lead now. Castillo comes set, pitch swung on and missed. Count evens at one ball and one strike, one out. E.J. Miller at second for Kaleida. Castillo looks back at Miller. Pitches sent deep center field. Back goes Gus Weiler. Reaches up, makes a fantastic play. Gus Weiler with one of those highlight reel catches snags it off the bat of Bethelli. That's the third best or the third fantastic play we've seen here today, and that by far is the best one of all three of them. Again, Grady, human highlight. Reel on defense goes way back in the left center gap, leaps, goes tumbling, and puts it away for out number two. Scampering back was EJ Miller to second base. For Kaleida, stepping in is Michael Hortzman. Hortzman struck out in the third as well. Two outs now. Pitch was a ball to Hortzman. Steele comes set, looks back at Miller in second. Pitch is outside. Throw down to second base. Good throw would have got Miller. Harris snuck in there and took the throw, but not before EJ. This throw was a little bit high. EJ slapped the tag, or EJ. Harris slapped the tag on EJ Miller, but not before he's back to the base. Bosselman's going to head out to the mound, and Mr. Eric Tipton, the Rams pitching coach, pops out of the dugouts here. Kind of old school dugouts here. They're dug into the ground a little bit. A couple feet. Kind of like the major league dugouts. <laughs> I went in to take a picture of the opposing lineup like I usually do. And they got some, what's I'll post in my post game article. They actually have in Kaleida in their dugout like these professional lineup cards. It was fantastic. It's like the tight, this, uh, like the ones you see during Major League Baseball that they auction off. <laughs> like a full-size Major League Baseball lineup card, but it was had quite a logo and everything on it. It was, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to the number nine hitter Michael Hortzman. The steal comes set. Miller leads away from second pitch to the plate. Strike called. Wildcats was a 3-2 lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Right now, that run is unearned, depending on what Hortzman does here. This deals 2-1, long pause, comes to the plate. Yeah. Hortzman asked for time, but Castillo already was in motion. Just continued with the pitch. Pitch did not count. Miller back to second. He leads away. Back into the box is Michael Hortzman. 2-1 count from Castillo coming to Hortzman. Swung on and missed strike two. Rams with just two runs certainly had many opportunities to score more. As we said, they've stranded eight through three innings. Castillo's pitch swung on and missed. Down goes Hortzman. For Castile, that's strikeout number three. In the inning, one run for the Wildcats. They break the tie. They go ahead three to two. And Kaleida does so without the benefit of a hit. One huge ram error, and Kaleida leaves one on base after four innings of play over here at Holy Name Ballpark in Kaleida. It is the Wildcats three and the Tenor Rams two here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. 
Fire and Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fire and Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Fire and Stone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Fired Stone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Back at Holy Name Ballpark here in Kaleida. Rams now trail 3-2 to two for the Rams. Harris, Bosselman, and Morlock. 5, 6, and 7 to face E.J. Miller. Miller came in relief in the fourth inning for Colin Huffman. First pitch to Harris is a strike. Strike one on Luke Harris. Luke. 0 for 1. Walked and stole a base in the third. Miller winds it up. Fires. Harris. Fouls it back on the first base side out of play. Strike one, uh, strike two for Luke Harris. Sarah Harris across the way taking some fantastic picks as always on the end of the Rams dugout. Pitch to Harris, ground ball, shortstop side behind the bag. Jaden Smith fires out Luke Harris. Nice play by Jaden Smith. We have definitely seen our, our uh, number of fantastic plays here today, but nothing is going to beat Grady's playing center field last inning. Like I said, I wish I had it on video. Dang. Going to bring up Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman doubled and scored in the second and walked in the third. First pitch to Hunter is a strike. Miller's pitch to Bosselman. The ball. Ball one. Strike one. One out. Base is empty. For Bosselman. Rams trail three to two. Bosselman hammers it. Deep center field. One hops the wall. Horseman picks it up, but not before. Bosselman's in there with a stand-up double with one out. Second double by Hunter. Rip that deep center field right in front of the 356 sign out there. Number two. Yes, yes, Bridget. Man, that was a fantastic. You'll have to hear about it from Grady. <laughs> you got my voice. <laughs> and that's about it. But, man, oh, man, that was awesome. Eli Plasman is going to pinch hit for B.J. Morlock. So Eli steps in here in the top of the fifth. With Bosselman the second, he leads away. E.J. Miller on the mound. As for time, as for his catcher, Ethan Weary, to come out there with a the runner a second. It may change up the signs a bit. Bosselman was a second double, stands a second. Rams trail three to two here in the top of the fifth. Ramps have two runs, five hits, one error, three runs, three hits, no errors for the Wildcats. Plasman steps in. Eli, heck of a night on the mound. Thursday versus Antwerp. Pitch to Eli is a strike. Eli coming in, batting 333. He has four hits and 12 at bats. Osman leads away from second. Pitch coming to Plasman. Miller comes set. Little tapper past the mound. Third baseman boosts in there, fires over to first base in time to get Eli for out number two. I three on the put out. Little tapper, third base side. Boost came hustling in, scooped it up, fired over to first base. That is the 
plasma. And Eli, working on a little bit of a sprained ankle, coming up Riley Peters. He said he pitched that entire game with a sprained ankle on Thursday. The ball, first pitch of the ball to Riley. 1-0 pitch to Peters. A little bit low, nice stop by Weary. As Bosselman went down to third on the ground ball by Plasman. So he's at third with two outs now. Peters at the plate, two balls and no strikes to him. E.J. Miller comes set. Pitch fouled off first base side over in the parking lot. It's not really a lot. It's a street parking. It's a bunch of cars over there, like, I don't know, 20. So Fabian winds up with the baseball on the car or windshield. Yes, I'll be going to Bat Stevens this weekend. Pitch hit behind the bag a second. Long throw. Oh! Jaden Smith. I think that was Jaden Smith. Or no, that was Braylon Smith. My goodness gracious. Smith with the back behind his, the play behind second base spun, slid, and threw out Riley Peters at first base. Oh my goodness gracious. What a. There's like four fantastic plays here. I was actually getting ready to write down that it was a tying run, honestly. But Braylon Smith with a second fantastic play here for Braylon. So in the inning, the Rams threaten. They do not score. No runs, one hit, no errors. The Rams leave another runner on base. That's the ninth runner left on base for Tsunora. Heading to the bottom of the fifth inning here at Kawaita. It is Kawaita 3 and Tsunora 2 on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. We'll be back right after this. Fairchild Family Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at FairchildFamilyChiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla, proud members of the to our athletic boosters say go Rams back here heading to the bottom of inning number five and I almost had to grab my white out and erase that run because I pretty much put it on the board Bosselman at third Peters at the plate Riley with a bouncer over the mound behind second base the second baseman Braylon Smith comes sliding in with the backhand scooped it up fired from his knees over to first base to get Peters out at first base by just a half a step what a play Thank you. for Kaleida top of the lineup and that's Braylon Smith again leading off after a fantastic play. Strike one, and then the second pitch is called a strike. Strike two to Braylon Smith. That happened in the first inning. He made a great play to end the Rams' first inning and then wound up hitting a double in the gap. Swung on, fouled this one back. Count stays. No balls and two strikes. 3-2, Wildcats on top here. Two runs, five hits, one error for the Rams. Three runs, three hits, no errors for the Wildcats. In a game with four or five highlight real plays. Castile's pitch to the backstop, it goes. Ball one. They like a little traveling tent so I can broadcast games outside. <laughs> Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Smith for out number one here in the fifth. Fifth strikeout for Castile. Number two hitter Drew Boos steps in. Boos actually had a nice play himself there in the top of the fifth. Down the third base, came running in, scooped it up, fired over to first base. To get Eli Plasma. First pitch is a strike. Castile's 0-1 pitch to Boos, swung on. Hit to right center field, and over there is Luke Harris to put it away for out number two. F9 on the put out. 
Second out, Jaden Smith steps in. Jaden with an RBI in the first on a sacrifice fly. He walked in the third. Jaden Smith coming batting 420 with 21 RBI. Now has 22 RBIs. Castillo winds it up. Pitch swung on. Pop third base side. Ward underneath it. Radzik calls him off and puts it away for out number three. In the inning, Wildcats go quickly in the fifth. No runs, no hits, no ram errors. No Wildcats left on base. To the top of the sixth we go. Here at Holy Name Ballpark in Kaleida, Ohio. The Wildcats three and the Storm Rams two. We'll be back right after this timeout on Crop Zone Pizzeria Scoreboard. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-6894. Back here at Kaleida. Ram's going to send up 9-1-2. and two. Gus Weiler, Mosier, and Radzik to face E.J. Miller. Miller coming into his third inning of relief. Colin Huffman started, went the first three innings. Allowed two runs, three hits, and stranded seven runners. I said Rams have stranded a runner every single inning and multiple runners several times. Pitch to Grady, strike called. No balls and one strike to the Rams center fielder, Grady Gusweiler. Grady walked in the second and grounded out. Here he grounds out to the shortstop. One hopper to Jaden Smith. Throws over to first base in time to get Grady. 6-3 on the putout for out number one. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier steps in. But what a play by Grady a couple innings ago out there in center. Wow. Aiden Mosier struck out in the first. Singled and stole the base in the second and grounded out in the fourth. First pitch is called a strike to Aiden. Caden Radzik awaits on deck. Miller's 0-1. Ground ball, shortstop side. Jaden Smith again. Backhanded play fires out Mosier for out number two. Caden Radzik. 6-3 on the putout for out number two. Ram shortstop Caden Radzik steps in. Caden had a nice play earlier. Moving right along here. We're in the sixth inning already. Pitches a strike to the Rams shortstop, Radzik. Junior bats from the right side of the plate. Came in batting 455 with 19 runs batted in. Pitch is laced back through the box. Second baseman, oh. <laughs> Braden Smith, finally unable to make a play. He fielded it, and the time he set himself, his feet slipped out from underneath him. So an infield single for Caden. So Radzik's on it first with two out. Dalton Wolfram will step to the plate. Wolfram walked in, stole the base in the first, grounded out to Boos at third in the third, and doubled in the gap in the fourth. CFBR sends Radzik here. Odds are that that's a good possibility. Caden with five steals. There he goes. Pitch to Wolfram is inside, and it fouls off his bat. Strike one. Back to first goes Caden. Miller on the mound looks over at Radzik. Miller comes set. 
Pitch coming to Wolfram. There goes Caden. Throw down in time. Nice throw by Weary to get Radzik, and that wasn't even close. Caden out by about seven feet. So that's a third out on the caught stealing. That ends the Rams inning in the sixth. No runs for Tenora. One hit on the infield single by Radzik. No errors for the Wildcats. And for the first time, the Rams do not leave anybody on base. Headed to the bottom of the sixth inning here at Kaleida's Holy Name Ballpark. The Wildcats three. And the Rams two. We'll be back right after this time out here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one -on -one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing, rather than going to the gym merely. To work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and so to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Back here at Kaleida. Rams run out of time. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Wildcats with a 3-2 lead over Tenora. Rams have two runs on six hits, one error. And Clyda has three runs on three hits and have not committed an error. Like a defensive spectacular game here. Five, six plays, all with double stars in my scorebook. And a couple have triple stars. Two for Braylon Smith at second. And then one for Grady Gusweiler. And two stars for Caden Radzik is short on the play he made earlier. First pitch to... Colin Hoffman is a strike. Four, five, and six. Hoffman, Carson Clausing, and Siebenick to face Corbin Castile. Castile's 0-1. Strike two called. The run that broke the tie was actually scored on the balk in the fourth inning. 0-2 pitch swung on, popped on the infield. And it's put away by Eli Plasman. So Plasman came in last inning to pinch hit. He is now a second. And Luke Harris back to his right field position. Carson Clausing steps in. First pitch to him was a ball. This pitch is roped into center field for a base hit. So Clausing with a one out single. Rounds the bag. He's going to stay put as Grady Gusweiler comes in from center. Flips it into the infield. So Mosier's in left. Gus Grady's in center. And in right is Luke Harris. Rams infield, Morlock, Plasman, Radzik, and Ward. Ward on the cut of the grass for Jason Siebenick. First pitch to Siebenick is swung on and missed. Strike one. Bottom of the six, three, two Wildcats. Heck of a game. <laughs> Runner at first, Clossing leads away. Castillo fires over. Ball gets away from Morlock, but not far enough. Or that's Hunter Bosselman actually over there now. So Bosselman in place of Morlock. And Wolfram came in to catch. So more changes for the Rams. So Dalton's back in the catcher. Bosselman's at first. Those two in the game. And Plasman at second. Harris in the right. Pitches outside, throw down to first base, not in time. Ball gets away from Bosselman. Not far away enough for Clausing to advance. Pitch to Siebenick is one ball and one strike. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. The Wildcats of Clyda leading three to two. Castillo looks over at the runner at first, comes set, comes to the plate, swung on, fouled back. Strike two. Castillo has gone the distance. Three runs, 
and four hits. I believe just two of those runs are earned. <laughs> See Nick digs in. Castillo gets the sign from Wolfram. Comes set. Comes to the plate. Pitches a bit outside. Two balls and two strikes. One out. Runner at first base is Carson Clossy. Clossing leads away. Castile, his 2 2 to the plate, swung on and fouled back to Jacob Simonek. DJ e. Miller should be on deck. I can't actually see who's on deck because they got this nice banner here. So I'll take a picture of that as well before I leave. It's the senior class walking out of a cornfield. It's kind of like a scene, a scene from Field of Dreams. 2 2 pitch, swung on, tap foul, third base side. Coach Ernsberger out there fires it back. Coach Ernsberger here at Kaleida, his third season, he's 47 and 25. He's a 96 Kaleida graduate. He actually spent a little bit of time in the minor leagues, if I recall. 2 2 pitch. Try! Three call. Down goes Sibanek for out number two. That is the sixth strikeout for Corbin. Two outs now. Runner at first. E.J. Miller steps in. Miller reached on an error by Radzik his last time up. And that first pitch to Miller is a ball. Which would have been the final out of the inning, and then the next batter came to plate and crossing scored on a balk. Ground ball right back to Castile by E.J. Miller. Corbin scoops it up, fires over to Hunnell Bosselman at first base for out number three in the inning for Kleida. No runs. One hit, no Ram errors, and the Wildcats leave their fourth runner on base. Rams, last at bat here coming in the seventh inning. They're going to have three, four, and five. Wolfram, Ward, and Harris. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard is Kaleida three. And Tenora two. We'll be back with the Rams rally coming up right after this time out. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576- 5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polish Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polish Salon is a proud supporter of Tadora Rams Live. Back here we are. Top of the seventh inning for the Rams. Dalton Wolf from Tyron Ward and Luke Harris to face E.J. Miller. Miller in his fourth inning of relief of starter Colin Huffman. Number 15, Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram has been on base twice, walked in the first and stole a base and doubled in the gap in the fourth. So Dalton steps in, bats from the right side, been the hottest hitter for the Rams this week. Two player of the game awards by Dalton. So what Dalton's got to do here. First pitch by EJ to Dalton is high and away, ball one. A.J. Miller winds it up. Pitch coming to Dalton. Strike called on the outside corner. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Nice crowd over here on this Saturday afternoon. Thanks for joining us here on Snow Rams Live. Pitch strike two on the outside corner. Rams trail by one here on the top of the seventh. Dalton Wolfram. Behind one ball and two strikes. E.J. Miller winds, throws. Wolfram taps it just outside the bag at third. By Coach Renolette. Coach Tipton coaching at first base. E.J. Miller winds it up. The one-two to Wolfram. Outside. 
two balls and two strikes to Dalton Wolfram. Walton started it. Wolfram started in right. Came back behind the plate last inning. Miller's 2-2. Two -two. Wolfram hits the second base side, and that's not where you want to hit it. Vacuum cleaner over there. Braylon Smith scoops it up and throws out Wolfram. 4-3 on the put out. Rams down to their last two outs. Bring up Karen Ward. Ward walked in the first, doubled and scored in the third, and grounded to Jaden Smith at short in the fifth. Pitch up and in to Karen Ward on deck is Luke Harris and Hunter Bosselman to follow. As the construction crew is still going away here on this Saturday early afternoon. Pitch to Taryn is a bit high and away. Two balls and no strikes to the Rams. Third baseman, Taryn Ward. Just uh, about 90 minutes old for our game here. Up and in, leans Ward way back. Three balls and no strikes to Taryn. EJ's 3-0. Outside ball four gets away from the catcher, Weary. Ward jets down the first base, but he's going to hang on there. So the Rams have the tying run at first base with one out, trailing three to two here in the top of the seventh. Luke Harris started at second base, moved to right field last inning. Harris comes in, batting 348. 16 hits for Luke on the season. A perfect spot for one right here. First pitch to Harris by E.J. Miller is a strike. Let's see if VR wants to put uh, Taron in motion here on a hit and run. Stays put. Pitch to Harris is a little bit high and away. Count evens at one ball and one strike. One out. Rams trail three to two to the Wildcats in a heck of a high school baseball game. Defensive just man, defensive plays everywhere here today. Throw over, Ward back safely. Castillo has gone the distance for the Rams. Colin Huffman started, he went the first three innings and E.J. Miller has been on in relief ever since. Fourth inning for E.J. Miller. His pitch to Harris, oh, gets away. Gets behind Weary, so Ward goes down to second on the wild pitch. That's just as good as a bunt with one out. Ward is at second now. Harris has a two balls and one strike count. Rams trail by one. Miller comes set. His 2-1 pitch coming to Harris is way outside ball three. Hunter Bosselman on deck and Hunter with a double. In the second and the fifth. And a walk in the middle and sandwiched in there. 3 1 coming to Harris, though. As the sun pops through, that's high and away ball four. So Harris crossed down the first with a one out walk. Rams have runners at first and second with one out. And Hunter Bosselman to the plate. Timeout. Coach Ernsberger is going to go out and have a conversation with E.J. Miller. Rams need a rally. Coach BR asked for Taryn Ward to, hey, come join me. Let's have a, a little bit of a talk here. Here's what we're going to do. The ball's in the gap. You're going to score. And if you got a chance to score, you better hustle it around here. That's going to be it. We're going to have a pitching change. We're going to have a new pitcher for Kaleida. And that will be Drew Boos. So Boos comes on from third, and Miller goes to third so Miller from the mound to third base and Boos goes from third base to the mound and we'll try and get some numbers on what about game changer and get like instant stats for the team as long as they use it and quite it does it's just they just don't score live so for Boos The numbers on him, as soon as I come across them, he's pitched 24 innings. He is two and two. He's allowed 18 hits in those 20 innings. He's allowed 12 runs, nine earned runs. He struck out 18 and walked 12. So ERA of 2.65 for a Drew Boos. So Boos comes on with one out here in the top of the seventh with the Rams have runners at first and second. 
and one out here at Holy Name Ballpark here at Kaleida. So it's been popping in and out. Not as much out as we'd like over here, but we'll take it. St. Michael's Holy Name Ballpark. What a fabulous facility this is going to be when it gets completed. Can't wait to come back here. Last time we were here, which I never did actually tell that story, was probably the greatest day that anybody has seen up until that point was the summer of 2000. That was right in the middle of COVID when the spring sports season was canceled and we got to come over here and play a baseball game. I never saw so much excitement in people's faces and eyes on that day when the world was basically on lockdown for the most part for two or three months. Pitch to Bosselman is a strike. So that's the last time the Rams were over here was the summer of, I think it was June actually, of 2020. No balls and one strike to Hunter Bosselman. Rams with runners at first and second with one out here at the top of the seventh. Swung on and missed. Bosselman quickly down. No balls and two strikes. Rams trail by one as they bat here. Three to two. Six hits for the Rams and four for the Wildcats. Boost, the third pitcher to work, comes set. His 0-2 pitch coming to Bosselman. Inside corner, breaking ball, strike three call, kind of froze Hunter. So he goes down looking. That's the second out. Rams down to their final out. Eli Plasman comes to the plate. Plasman. First pitch, strike called. Eli pinch hit for BJ Morlock, grounded out to the third baseman Boost in the fifth inning. But Boost on in relief here. His 0 1 pitch coming to Eli, swung on, tap foul. First base side, Rams are down to their final strike. Ward at second, Harris at first. Rams need a run to tie it. Get a base hit from Eli here. Batting 333 on the season. Boost comes set, looks in, gets the sign from Weary. He comes set, looks back at Ward at second. Pitch. Eli asked for time. And he got it. Pitch went through by Boost. Did not count. Gonna do it all over again. Plasman steps in. Boost comes set. His 0 2 pitch. Low ball one. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Ward at second is your tying run. Go ahead run is at first in Harris. Boost gets the sign from Weary, comes set, looks back at Ward a second. Pitch to Plasman, swung on, fouled back out of play. Plasman just stays alive. One ball and two strikes to Eli. Eli pitched a gem on Thursday versus Antwerp. Seven innings, all just one run, and that was a solo home run. Everybody's back to their positions. Runners are set. One, two from Boost to Plasman. Outside little off-speed pitch. Count evens at two balls and two strikes to Eli. Rams trail by one here in the top of the seventh. Down to their final strike. Tying run at the second in Karen Ward. Boost is 2-2, two, two. swung on, hit to shortstop. Yeah. Throw down to second in time. Jaden Smith fires to second base to Braylon Smith in time to get Harris. 6-4 on the put out and that ends the inning and the game for the Rams. Rams threaten to tie it, they just cannot. For Tenora, no runs in the seventh. They do not get a hit, no errors, and the Rams leave two more on base. And then we'll go back and review the game. But Rams' inability to hit in the clutch was definitely their downfall here today. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven runners left on base by Tenora. So final from Kaleida. The Wildcats, three runs, four hits, no errors, pick up the victory. Kaleida goes to 13 and four. And for the Rams, Two runs, six hits, six hits, and like I say, they leave 11 on base. And Tonora falls to 11 and four. Time of the game.
was one hour and 44 minutes. Temperature at game time was 54 degrees under David Frank weather forecast. So stay tuned. Coming up, we'll have the... I can find it. I can't see because the sun's now out and I can't find my hats. But we'll have the post-game show by Bidlack Insurance and Investments. And we'll do that right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back here at Kaleida. Welcome back to the St. Michael's Holy Name Ballpark. Kaleida with a 3-2 win over the Rams. Said Kaleida improves to 13-4. The Rams fall to 11-4. Rams and Wildcats. The non league game here. Wildcats led off the bottom of the first inning. Braden Smith with a double. He was sacrificed over by Drew Boos. And Jaden Smith with a sacrifice fly gave the Wildcats a 1 0 lead. Rams tied it in the second. Hunter Bosselman with a double and came around to score on a wild pitch. Karen Ward gave the Rams a 2-1 lead. Same situation in the third inning. Ward scored on a wild pitch. Wildcats tied it at 2. Braylon Smith scored the second run in the third. And is that way up until the fourth inning. And the third run for Kaleida was actually scored on the bulk. Carson Clausing scored the third run in the fourth inning, reaching via the bulk. Corbin Castillo went the distance, picked up a loss. That was a hard, hard loss by Corbin. Came in at three and one, so Corbin will fall to three and two. ERA coming in was two, and I believe that he allowed just two runs. The third run, which uh, there's a Ram error in that inning as well, which put him on base and led to the go-ahead run. So, fantastic game over here. Beautiful setting. Can't wait till this place is finished over here. We'll see everybody. Um, I don't actually have the schedule in front of me. It was on one of my papers that got saturated earlier, but I think Tuesday Tenora is home. I can... Believe it or not, I, I am very prepared. I over-prepare, but when your uh, information gets soaked, <laughs> it pretty much becomes useless at, at times. But I know the Rams are home quite a bit next week. Not actually sure when their next game is, but I'm going to try and find it so everybody, including myself, knows what I'm doing next week. So go to the old fantastic, reliable Arbiter, which for the most part is up to date. So in the upcoming week on Tuesday, Rams will be at Archibald. Now, I don't know that I can do that game because I think uh, Row A Radio, uh, Ryan, Ryan Throne and Coach Krause do almost all the Archibald games. I'll reach out to Ryan, but I'm pretty sure that he will have that on radio only on Tuesday, and I'll pass on that information when I get it. Um, Thursday, the Rams are home versus Ottaville. Rams are home versus a very good Columbus Grove team um, on Friday. And then Saturday, another very good team, Patrick Henry. So Coach Reynolds in search of win number 399 is going to have a rough road ahead. Uh, tough loss here, 3-2. Tuesday versus Archibald at Archibald. Thursday versus Ottaville. Friday versus Columbus Grove. And Saturday versus Patrick Henry. And that's a, that's a heck of a week of games right there. So 
Coach Renolette stuck on 399 for his career at Tenora. That's a Tenora win record only. So thanks everybody for joining us here on this beautiful, yet yeah, windy Saturday here from <laughs> the beautiful Holy Name Ballpark here in Kalia. So I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. And if I can't do the game Tuesday, which I'm planning on, I can't just because I said railway will probably have that. But I'll reach out to Ryan and see what he's got going on. And I'll pass that information on to you guys. But final again, Rams fantastic defensive battle by both teams here. For a baseball game, there's five or six highlighted plays here. But the Rams fall three to th or lose three to two to the very, very good quite a Wildcast team. So we're gonna pack everything up here and head home and take some more pictures of this uh, beautiful ballpark over here. Have a good weekend, everybody. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419 419- 428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award.